Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be an update that I've like, well I've had quite a few requests for and I completely understand why you'd want to know anyway because obviously the last videos I've posted are from like before surgery with Daisy and at first I thought oh well like I updated a lot while it was happening over on Instagram and Facebook but then I thought oh actually not everybody will have those or will like either follow me on there so if you want to know where they are they're in the description box down below if that's what you're into but I thought I would go through properly how everything's been um now I want to start off by saying that Daisy is absolutely fine and we are home now and healing like recovery seems to be going really well and as far as I know her repair was a success we don't see any holes in her palette at the moment um so fingers crossed it stays that way now I'm going to quickly go into what sort of surgery she had done because I think like sometimes I talk about all of these things like medical terms and I don't think I'm very clear at explaining what they always are so as I mentioned before, Daisy was born with Stickler syndrome and as part of that we both had, because I was born with the same thing, something called Pierre Raban sequence and that is a small lower jaw that will grow forward in time, a tongue that is blocking the airway as a result of that jaw and typically a cleft palate. Now what Daisy went in for when she was in hospital was her cleft palate repair. Basically when Daisy was in my womb and it was before the 12 week mark um her she was all forming looking gorgeous and cute and tiny and um because of her small jaw not growing as well as it should do it meant the tongue rather than sitting more like this was sitting upwards so what happened is that the palate um the two palate like plates if you will when they were coming together to form they couldn't because the tongue was in the way so that meant that when she was born she had like a hole in the roof of her mouth and that is essentially what the palette is and I'm going to insert a picture here so you can sort of see that big gap because if you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth it would be completely solid and formed whereas hers wasn't and mine wasn't. So the operation was to repair that. Now she could live the rest of her life with her cleft palate and she would be fine but as part of having a cleft palate you do get some developmental delays when it comes to speech because you can't make the sounds and push air through your mouth in the same way that you can like I'm talking now so Daisy in terms of what she could say before she had the surgery was quite limited she could say mama and she could make certain sounds and she was very very nasal and pushed um air through her palate to make like <laughs> noises which she doesn't do anymore which has been quite sad to sort of like not hear um but thankfully i have videos like this um and as well as that when she eats food could go up her palate and come out of her nose and she has um sneezed food all over me before when i've been feeding her she shot a pee across the room as have i like it's part and parcel and obviously it's not like the most comfortable thing to have so the repair was all for her best interest so we went in on the 14th of february which was valentine's day and prior to that she could have her last feed before two o'clock so we fed her at half past one and that was all done we, it was like a dream feed she didn't have very much and then we went to the hospital and we had to be there at half past seven in the morning hospital is probably about 45 minutes away um because it's a really like busy rush hour -y type journey um and we got there we parked up and we took her in and while we waited uh, it wasn't that long like she just played and stuff and then she was weighed and taken through to what mark said reminded her of mcdonald's it was like a really weird it was a really weird layout it's like a room or like a waiting area and it had like booths where people could sit a lot like mcdonald's and then some tables in the middle with like comfy chairs around and you were basically allocated a booth or a table and then the team would come around and do all the various checks on daisy to make sure that she was healthy to go through what was going to happen with her to have some special numbing cream put on her hands ready for her iv so it didn't hurt her too much and we waited and we waited and we were told that because of daisy's age she was like first on the list for our surgeons so that was good and I think it was about quarter past nine we were told that we could like take her down and I was I really struggled <laughs> I really really did 
but they must have taken pity on us because only one parent could actually go in the room from what we were told but when they saw us they were like it's fine both of you could come in so mark held daisy and he held her like this with her arm like wrapped around his back but that was the arm like the hand where they were putting in the iv and while that was happening i was like making a laugh and kissing her and tickling her toes and pretending to eat her feet i remember doing that and she went off quite easily it was quite hard to see her go under because she was very floppy and lifeless looking and that was quite difficult and then we were told to give her a kiss and the anaesthetist was like don't worry we're going to look after it and they were honestly there was like four of them in there and they were the nicest bunch of people i've ever met they were so good at their job because we, they were so they knew how precious she was and they treated her as such and it was just an ease off my mind and then we were walked out and the one thing I will say then is that they kind of let us out of that surgery area and then we were just sort of stood in the corridor and we didn't really know what to do or where to go and I was I struggled a bit with that because I, I needed a chance to sort of an intimate setting so I could cry because I was very very upset so I ended up locking myself in the toilet and Mark just waited for me and I knew that anybody walking past would hear me crying but I was just so so upset because obviously i still have this guilt surrounding the fact that all of this is happening because of a, a syndrome that she got from me <sighs> but we were encouraged after we found our way back we could leave all of our things while there was a bed getting prepared for her and we were encouraged to go for a walk and we got some fresh air and we got something to eat because we were told that it would be unlikely that we'd get a chance to sort of leave her after that because she'd be very upset when she came round and in the end we were able to like we came back after we like got it out of our system and I'd calmed down a bit by then but it was just that sort of fidgety weight like you know when you like fidget and I pick the cuticles on my nails and I bite my lip and I had like a really raw lip <laughs> by the time she was out and then we were by her bed we'd been given a bed initially that was in a really dark ward that was very busy well it was like the same ward but they had different like rooms if that makes sense like four to a room and then we got moved into another room which was much brighter and lighter had a window much airier and immediately I felt much better about that and there were only two of us in there at the time so that was good and then we a lady came over and said like she's ready she's out she want to come and see her bring some food for her so we took some took a bottle of milk we took um a beaker in case that would help with some juice and we also took some food in case she wanted any of those things and we went into the recovery area and it was so hard to see because she was already really swollen in the face and like there was blood obviously and she was just she was being cradled by this other woman and she just couldn't get her to settle and the anaesthetist said like she nearly knocked him out because she's a feisty girl is our day and then um, I was past her and I sat down and held her and immediately like I put her in the upright position like I used to when she was tiny and packed her back and immediately she settled and my heart was like racing up until that point and then it just calmed and um, we sat with her in recovery for a little while we were told and we noticed that she didn't have the nasopharyngeal tube down her nose to help support her airway while she was swollen so that was a real big surprise because we were half expecting that and we were told that her airway was fine that her intubation grade from being a grade three to four i think it was was now a grade one so her chin had grown enough and that was a big success for us because when daisy was first um born she had an endoscopy i think it's called or an endoscope done at manchester and they came out and said she was a grade three to four uh, to intubate and her airway was very narrow and they thought that just in case we should have a tracheostomy and we thought thought that and we got a second opinion at older hay so to see her you know it was about nine months down the line at grade one she never would have needed that tracky and it was a huge moment for us where we were like a small victory for trusting our gut and then basically we were taken back to the ward she was in her bed for a bit like i was holding her mark was holding her we were trying to settle her everything seemed fine apart from the fact that she wouldn't eat really or drink but that was normal and i noticed that she didn't seem to be able to swallow and she wasn't swallowing at all so anything you put in her mouth she'd try and like dip her head back to drink it so it was suggested that she go on an iv which is normal um in a lot of babies and I'm fast forwarding through this bit because it's not really the main bit. <laughs> 
and that night Mark was sent home he wasn't allowed to stay in the ward which was heartbreaking because I knew it was going to be a stressful night and basically what happened is that Daisy would not settle she screamed the entire night long she wouldn't rest every time she tried to go to sleep she would wake her up with this noise wake herself up with this noise that she was making at first I thought it might be a snore but she was going <laughs> like that and the noise was horrible and it would happen with every breath and then she'd move and try and reposition herself. I was really concerned and I asked for help so many times that night but she was attached to monitors so I could only walk so far and I couldn't get to the nurses and I couldn't put her down so a lot of the time I'd just have to wait for them or shout them and I was so stressed. Her SATS levels in terms of her ox oxygen saturation and her blood were fine so everyone was quite confused. They rang the surgeon uh, at five o'clock in the morning. She was like, well, if her sats are fine, then she's fine. It'll probably just be the swelling and snoring that's waking her up. But I wasn't convinced. And we were told that we'd probably go home that day. And I was like, okay, maybe this is just me, like being overprotective, maybe this is normal. But when she was checked to go home, some, I don't know if they were plastic surgeons, like the one that did her repair, or they were ear, nose and throat, so, like I'm not really sure who they were, but they came, they checked her over, and then that was when things went really bad, and what they decided was that Daisy was obstructing in her sleep, and by that point, she was exhausted, she hadn't eaten anything properly, she was in a lot of pain, and she was sat on Mark's knee, like dropping asleep, like really drowsy, and I was very, very, very frightened. And it was then decided that immediately she had to have an MPA, nasal pharyngeal airway fitted down her nose. Um, we needed a cleft person there straight away, but our cleft nurse was in the Isle of Man doing a transfer from another baby. So we couldn't get her, so we got another one that we have met before who's lovely. And they got the MPA ready and they tried to fit it and they couldn't. And I think it was all very stressful and the cleft nurse herself was very stressed. And she was like, do you want to do it? Because I used to do it all the time when Daisy was at home. And I did it immediately and it went in and I was so relieved. But then like, it just, the shock of it really, like I wasn't prepared for that happening, but I did it in that moment because I wanted my baby to be okay. But it was very, very hard to go back to that time where I used to do it all the time. I had a lot of flashbacks <laughs> and I did it and my hands, like I have never, like they were shaking and then I just burst into tears and the cleft nose grabbed my hands and she was like, are you okay? She was like, you're amazing. It's all right, she's going to be fine. And then Mark just held me and they were like taping her down and sorting her out and making sure that she was okay. And then she was transferred to high dependency. But all of this was happening on a public ward. So they could hear me crying. They could hear all the fuss and the upset. And it was very, very traumatic. It really was. And we got to high dependency. And we were told she would probably have to stay there until the weekend with the MPA in, unless she pulled it out. And then they would see how she does for a short while. Um, so in the days that followed, it did block up with blood initially, so we took it out and then it needed to go back in, so I fitted another one. And then it was just waiting and we spent a lot of time waiting for her at first to recover. She was very quiet, she was very drowsy, she was very upset, she just wasn't herself and I was so worried about her. I was thinking like, is she ever going to breathe again? Is she ever going to be okay? Like, do we have to have an MPA forever? We didn't know. Um, and she just wasn't getting better really like without it she was still obstructing and then they said right we're going to leave it in until sunday then so this was like five days later like we got in early on tuesday morning and um they said right on sunday night we sunday would take it out in the morning and then sunday night we'll do sleep study and if she passes sleep study then she can go home on monday and that was the longest night of my and mark's life the longest night like we had to try and get to sleep for starters which was difficult when your baby's in pain and in a strange place and we didn't really sleep much at all i certainly didn't and um that morning they were waiting for the ent team to come and assess her sleep study and it turned out she did pass but they would like to redo it from home in a couple of weeks time so we need to go and get the equipment set her up and set that off so they can just double check like have things progressed and are they still okay and we were able with the urgence of our cleftness um to get home before the morning was out and 
it was at the time we were very optimistic and we were like oh she's done it fantastic we got in the car and we went to ronald mcdonald house where we were staying and honestly if you give any money anywhere this year if you donate to charity please consider clapper Catholic and Palette Association and please consider the Ronald McDonald House because those both of those charities Clapper have given us so much support and information and Ronald McDonald House enabled us to spend small quiet moments as a family together in a time of our lives that was so difficult and I cannot explain how much we needed that we couldn't go home because it was so far away and she needed us we didn't feel comfortable leaving her for one second there was always one of us with her and it was really it was really really hard and i'm trying very hard not to get like super emotional because i want this to be like factual as well she is home now we do have an angel care like monitor that anybody can buy and that's given us a lot of peace of mind i have struggled to sleep uh a because she still gets up in pain and she's on quite regular pain relief and um b because i'm frightened that she's going to stop breathing or something will go wrong but she is she's doing really really well she is she's she's getting better every day and i will do a separate video with her about her recovery and how we found things on a more like basic like level um because i think it's going to be too long otherwise but i just wanted to sort of update you so what turned or what was meant to be one night in hospital come home the next day turned into something completely different but the fact is is that she is okay and we're very very grateful for that um someone did mention on my comments on instagram and said that she didn't like the fact that my feet was so negative because at least my baby was alive and obviously i no longer let that person have access to my feeds and stuff anymore but it was it was a very obvious thing to say because of course we're very lucky that she's alive but i wanted to sort of bring this up because if you're a parent that's about to go through what we've been through or you're a parent who has a child who has maybe a syndrome and other the difficulties i don't ever want any of you feeling like you need to apologize for how hard you're finding it because it's a fucking nightmare it's a struggle it's shit it's horrible it splits your family apart i barely saw my son <laughs> and you are so worried i don't think any parent would choose to go through this and i don't think any parent would ever want to come away from hospital or anywhere without their child and i understand that i'm very lucky but it doesn't take away from that experience and i wouldn't wish it on anyone um but she's okay and that is what matters and we're going to be fine and we are going to move on from all of this but i just wanted to do this update because i feel like I need to get this sort of done and then I can sort of move on from it and I can go hopefully put this behind us and go on with life like with this being a tough chapter rather than something that has repeatedly come back to haunt me um I'm so proud of our daughter and I'm so grateful to all of you for every single message of support and the letters and the comments and the private messages and the presents and the gifts and everything that any anyone has done like you do not know how needed that was and this is a big thank you as well thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon bye mm -hmm.